Welcome back to the bench everyone. Today's video is the continuation of the audio output topology series where I talk about different types of output stages. Still pretty early in the series here. I'm still on the single driven element type class A amplifiers. And in the future I will move on to uh, more complex type output stages, push-pull stages and things like that. This is the first one this year. I wanted to do this more frequently, but you know, maybe one a month. But as it turns out, uh, <laughs> this is the first one I've done since it was like December 31st or something when I put the last one up. And it's near the end of March. Oh well. So what we have here is a, another single driven element Class A amplifier. If you remember the other video, it had a constant current source here which consisted of a couple transistors and resistors and the driven element which means the audio signal is what's driving this transistor. In this design I'm going to make the circuit as simple as possible. It's going to be, as you can see, there's not a lot of components here. In place of the active current source we have a coil or it could be a transformer or a auto transformer design. The reason for that is if you think about early radio receivers when they went solid state some of them the chassis was driven directly from the line there was no power transformer so this was a very low current passing through the primary probably under 10 milliamps and to match it with the uh, 8 or 4 ohm speaker whatever they used they had to use a transformer and if it had a uh, headphone jack it would have been a pretty good idea to uh, isolate the uh, secondary from the primary for obvious reasons and sometimes you would see an auto transformer design like in early car radios where they had just one output transistor they would have a coil like this or sometimes it was tapped at some point along the coil and connected to a speaker and that would just help impedance match it to say a 4 ohm speaker they could run a little bit less current and use a a 4 ohm speaker or maybe 3.2 ohm or whatever they were using there now in the early days you saw a lot of the germanium PNP power transistors because NPN power transistors were not very common yet. You know they weren't as good at that time and they were expensive. So this circuit might have been kind of flipped around using a PNP germanium transistor. So if you're working on an earlier radio or something like that, an earlier car radio you might see it that way. Okay so like I said I'm going to keep this really simple. I'm going to use a 2SC5200 power transistor and it has an actual different part number FJP5200 in the TO220 case. This is a purpose-made audio output transistor I talked about in the previous transistor video and I, I like the TO220 version because I can plug it in socket boards pretty easy. So I need to decide on a current I'm going to put through this circuit. I decided to use 500 milliamps so I have to do some calculations. I measured its gain with the component tester and it came out at 72. That seems kind of low for those transistors and Sometimes when you measure power transistors at low current, you will get a kind of deceptive low gain value. So keep that in mind. But I'm just going to run with the calculation and see how it works out. I've included a 0.47 emitter resistor. It's called emitter degeneration. And what it does is 
gives the circuit some negative feedback. It costs you gain. It degenerates your gain a little bit at the cost of some negative feedback. And it helps with thermal stability and, uh, you know, keeping the DC characteristics characteristics in check. Okay, so have 500 milliamps I decided to use. So I have to figure out what is the value of this biasing resistor. I need to set the current going into the base so I get 500 milliamps out. So I take 500 milliamps divided by 72 and I get around 7 milliamps. Well I have that value now so I need to figure out what is the value of this resistor still. Well I need to find the voltage drop from the 12 volts to the base. Well, of course, we have the base to emitter diode junction drop of around 0.65 volts. And we're going to have 507 milliamps flowing in the emitter because this 500 milliamp base current and the 7 milliamps come together for 507. Use Ohm's law to calculate a 0.24 volt drop across that. So I can add these together and I get... 0.89 volts. So I take 12 minus 0.89 and get 11.11. And I do the Ohm's Law math again. 11.11 divided by 7 milliamps. And it comes out to just shy of 1600 ohms. Well, I looked around and I can't find one. So I just used a 1K and a 470 ohm resistor in series to give me you know just shy of 1500 so yeah we are a bit low and to cut to the chase I built the circuit out hooked it up to the power supply and turned it on it started out at 620 milliamps because we are low it will start out high and after the heat sink thermally stabilized the current draw stabilized at 700 milliamps so it didn't thermally run away which is good but it came out a little higher than I wanted it to be. And again, I think the uh, measurement of the gain was a little deceptive at low current. So increasing the resistor here to lower the current would be the next option. So what I did is I just put two 1K resistors in series for 2K. And that got me what I wanted. So the amplifier was drawing at first about 450 milliamps and when the heat sink warmed up and stabilized, the current stabilized at 500 milliamps, exactly what I wanted. So enough of the yakety yak, let's get into the demo portion of this video and see what it sounds like. Okay, it's all hooked up. I'm using the music player directly driving the transistor. And it's powered up and it has stabilized right at half an amp, 12 volt supply. I don't really have a proper transformer. I'm just using this Radio Shack 70 volt PA transformer. I'm using the uh, speaker side of it connected across like that. And let's give a quick listen. Well, it sounds okay, except that there's not a lot of bass. And I'll explain why that is so. Well, you're probably asking yourself, why the coil here? Why not just connect the speaker? Very good question. And the reason is this. This coil is selected, so it has a very low DC resistance. So the bias current, instead of flowing through the speaker coil, you really don't want that bias current to flow through the speaker. It'll push the cone out with a small speaker. You know, it could overheat a small speaker and burn it up. 
And you know, it's just a really bad idea to have a large DC offset on the speaker voice coil. So if you have a low impedance relative to the speaker, you know, say this is 8 ohms, this coil would be you know, a fraction of an ohm. So most of the current is going to bypass that and go through the transistor. However, coils have inductance, so changes in current are going to be resisted by this coil and it's going to go through the speaker instead. So essentially you have DC bias currents flowing this way and the AC going through the speaker like that. Now the problem in my case, you know, I don't have a proper transformer. So at lower frequencies, you know, some of the bass is going to travel through the coil as well. I need more inductance to counter that and let the bass frequencies go through the speaker coil. Let's get some power measurements from this amplifier and see what it can put out. Okay, so I replaced the speaker with the 8 ohm resistor and we'll get a power measurement. 1 kilohertz signal here. So you crank that up and there you can start seeing it clip. Little clipping still. And I'd say right there is pretty good. So we're getting 2.49 volts. Okay, so 2.49 volts RMS squared divided by the load impedance of 8 ohms because it's 775 milliwatts. And that's about what I would expect from a 12 volt supply and a half an amp of current with a class A stage like this. And just shy of a watt. I could increase the current to a more appropriate uh, value and I did that in the other video I forget what it was like three quarters of an amp or something like that and probably get just as much output as I can from a standard push-pull amplifier driving an 8 ohm load from a 12 volt supply what's the efficiency of this setup well at half an amp 12 volts the total power is 6 watts and we're putting out you know, um, about 0.8 tenths or so. So if I take that 775 milliwatts divided by six, that comes out around uh, about 13%. Thought it would be better using the coil, but not so. Pretty abysmal efficiency with these class A type amplifier circuits. Here's the distortion. Like always, I have the 1 kilohertz fundamental, 4.5 kilohertz, 1% pilot signal. So we're seeing a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6% second harmonic, about 2.2 or so, third harmonic, about a 0.9 of a fourth. But we're running it at nearly clipping. Let's back that down, see what it looks like. So we're, um, cleans it up quite a bit. So it drops it down to, you know, uh, two graticules is 1%, 2%, and yeah, maybe like 2 point, I don't know, 2.2 or something. And uh, our third harmonic is a little under 1% now. If you remember my other videos, where I tested some tube amps and um, like some tube circuits and other transistor circuits. This has less distortion. Those other circuits went up to, uh, what was it, 7 or 8%. So this circuit is actually a little cleaner than I thought it would be. I'm sure using a decent audio type transistor with a very linear gain response is a big help here but yeah um, much better than I anticipated being a single element class A amplifier with a small amount of negative feedback I would expect some distortion like this it's not going to be clean that's for sure I'd have to have a circuit with higher gain and then give more negative feedback to clean that up 
So there you have it, another type of audio amplifier output stage topology video in the bag. Thanks for watching. Let's get some power measurements for the...